Hello, good morning to all of you. Um, so thanks for being here. Uh, the speech of today is about crowdfunding and territories. Uh, we think it's an interesting topic because by definition, uh, internet is global, and so a lot of people might think that uh, they always want to target a global audience with their crowdfunding project. So let's uh, talk about that. So uh, I'm one of the four partners of Yululi, which is uh, yululi.com. So on Yululi, it's a reward-based crowdfunding website. And so on Yululi, you can finance creative, innovative, or charity projects. Um, just to know, a uh, little question, which one of you already went on a crowdfunding website? Okay, almost everyone. Some of you already financed the project, maybe? Some people. And did some of you launch a project on a crowdfunding website? Okay, two people. So you're quite all familiar with the system. I'm not going to explain it, just a few uh, figures. So we financed so far uh, 2,100 projects. Uh, um, lots of categories. Uh, first category are films, uh, then music, uh, then charity, and games, green high tech, etc. We are in six languages uh, French, English, German, Spanish, Italian, and Portuguese. And so we have uh, now uh, uh, 150k members uh, from 142 countries. And. Oh, thanks. <laughs> And so the success rate of uh, projects which are launched on our website is 62%. So this is Yululi.com. Uh, we just launched uh, a new version uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, I hope you appreciate it. And so, as I said, crowdfunding is web-based. Uh, so should we care about territories? Um, a few examples uh, that would say no. This is an innovative folding helmet, we, uh, which have been designed by the French team, a French company, young company, which is based in Paris. And it has been funded by uh, 232 Yulodos from 26 countries. Only 40% of them are from France. So I think that you could say, okay, we don't care about territories. In fact, crowdfunding is global. This one, these are dedicated servers uh, for the game farming simulator uh, new version, and it has been financed by 349 backers from 27 countries. Once again, seeing that, you could think, okay, I don't care about territories, I'm global. And this one is uh, the Debian Administrator Handbook. Uh, Debian, uh, it's a tech uh, language, so uh, by definition, you're on a, on, on a global project, and once more, it has been backed for, by people from 52 countries, so we don't care about territories. But in fact, it's not at all the only truth about crowdfunding because most, lots of projects, and maybe most of them, are financed by people which are close to the location of the project. First example, this one uh, is a project which has been financed two years ago on Yololi. It's a reopening of theater in Jacksonville, USA. Um, it has been backed by 95% people coming from USA and 50% of them coming directly from Jacksonville. Here, of course, you see that this kind of project is by definition uh, as, as a very important location because the people who want to finance it are people who want this theater to reopen. So you have a big uh, uh, spread the world effect and it was very successful because a lot of people uh, which, was, uh, which were located in the neighborhood of the theater wanted it to reopen. So they spread the world together and uh, it was very success successful in this location. Yeah, it's very close. It's very close. This one, it's, uh, it has been financed uh, a few weeks ago. So it's a French comics news magazine, uh, which has been backed by more than 700 people. And 95% of them are located in France. Here, why uh, do you have a very important location aspect? Because of course, it's a language dependent project. So for the first project we've seen, uh, uh, you are the first uh, dedicated servers, you don't care about any language. Uh, the other one what was a folding and made by definition. You have no language, no written text uh, on, the, on this project, so you don't care uh, about... Uh, you, you, can, you can sell it all over the world. But for that, this, uh, this news magazine will be 
in French, so of course your audience is French based. And the last example, very different, it's a short circuit French local products uh, delivery transported by boat to Paris. And so the main reward, the main interesting reward, where uh, uh, bags full of uh, fresh uh, fruits and vegetables delivered to you uh, in the center of Paris. So, uh, of course, you have the intuition that uh, it, it could interest mostly people located in Paris. So it was backed by 60% uh, uh, coming from the Paris area. But what's interesting to see also is that, in fact, you have 40% people who finance these projects which are not located in Paris. And so they just wanted it to exist. And uh, maybe they will never get the, the, their reward, but they think this is a very uh, interesting initiative, and so they, they wanted to contribute to it. So you see that some projects are not dependent on their locations, and for others, it's a key matter. So the key question is, what about yours? Because now, for example, on Yululi and many other websites, uh, you have the possibility to translate all your project in many languages. So you could think uh, that you have to translate your page in as much uh, language as possible. But it depends. It depends first on your audience, then on your project. Are you language dependent or not? And then a key matter is the time you want to spend on your project pro promotion and distribution and reward. Crowdfunding, it's a big operation of communication. You have to spread the word. You have to make people back your project, contribute to it, and then promote it to their own community. And so the more locations you want to address, the more language you want to address, the more time you will have to spend on it. And for those of you who already uh, run a crowdfunding campaign, it's really time consuming. You have uh, to uh, give uh, information to people, you have to answer to their questions, you have to communicate, you have to make some events to participate, etc., etc. So in fact, even when you have a project which is not language dependent, it's not always the best idea to try to communicate about it uh, worldwide uh, because you might uh, just be unsuccessful in many locations while if you concentrate on one precise target, one precise audience, it might be much more efficient. It depends also on your aim because crowdfunding is not only about money. Money is the most obvious positive aspect of crowdfunding but in fact, crowdfunding is also a way to communicate to build a community and to real life test your ID and to make uh, to have a crowdsourcing effect uh, because you will get feedback from your fans, your potential customers. So you have to ask yourself before launching a project and before uh, deciding which audience you want to address, do you want to do that worldwide or to limit your action to a certain area? And in a lot of cases, it can be much more interesting to limit it to a certain area. So crowdfunding, what's more, is all about reaching the right audience for the right project. So crowdfunding loves locations, and locations love crowdfunding too. Here, it's an example of a specific platform we've launched with the Auvergne region, which is a, a region of France. Uh, some of you might know, even if they're not French. And so we've set up with uh, Auvergne Nouveau Monde, which is an association uh, depending from the Auvergne region, a platform dedicated to Auvergne project. Because the aim of this uh, association is to promote Auvergne, its uh, economic development and uh, its attractivity, uh, particularly for young people. And so they wanted to show that there are a lot of quality and active initiatives in Auvergne. And so they were very interested uh, to develop a crowdfunding platform dedicated for this project uh, because it was a very efficient way to show uh, all this activity and to get new initiatives being launched. So uh, it was uh, a subdomain on their website uh, powered by our technology. One thing which was very interesting in this uh, system is that local brands had the possibility to participate uh, in the funding of projects and to associate their image uh, to the projects they were funding. So here you can see that Credit Mutuel Massif Central, which is uh, the branch of Credit Mutuel, which is a, brand, uh, which is a bank uh, dedicated to Auvergne, they were backing, for example, this project with a one-to-one -one system. So when an, uh, an internet user gave one euro, they also gave one euro. So they limited it to uh, 2,000 uh, euros, I think, for this project. And so we, uh, on this operation, there were four major brands participating 
in the financing of projects, which was very positive for project creators be because it was much easier for them to get funding and very positive for the brand and institutions because uh, they associated their image with, uh, with, uh, with a project corresponding uh, to, to their image and to their values. So another very interesting aspect of that is that our partner in this operation, the Auvergne region, they have a local uh, uh, network that we do not have. We are located in Paris, so we do not know uh, all the actors located uh, in Auvergne, <laughs> while they know all the main institutions, all the important local brands, all the associative network. So they have the possibility to source projects, to make know to project creators that this initiative was being launched, to spread the word, to bring new potential backers, and also to create connections between project creators and local business ecosystem. Because we believe that crowd crowdfunding is an ecosystem. You need to have project creators, you need to have backers, but it's also very interesting to have institutions, to have brands, and to have medias which will participate in the funding of projects, which will participate in the communication, and it will give a lot of uh, positive outcomes to the project and project creators. And of course, what we brought in this partnership was the crowdfunding know-how and the technology. So this first edition uh, of this operation, uh, we had uh, 18 project loans and 11 were financed for 44k euros funding. So it was still quite small, but we are gonna, uh, go going to relaunch it uh, this year. And uh, we think that it's going to be bigger. What is interesting to see is that you could think that with such an operation, you would have a majority of backers coming from Auvergne. But in fact, you had only 30% of people which were uh, backers located in Auvergne. 50% of them were located in the rest of France and 20% were uh, uh, backers uh, located elsewhere worldwide. So uh, in fact, you see that you are doing a very, very uh, local uh, crowdfunding for local projects, but you have uh, in fact uh, backers uh, quite spread all, all over the world. And so you see the diaspora effect. A lot of people of Auvergne are going to other places and they are very interested to continue supporting uh, initiatives uh, from their uh, original region. So once more the question is, uh, and you for your project, where is located your potential audience? So I have just one minute, maybe more. So soon to come, just for you to know, uh, we are going to launch subdomains dedicated uh, to regions, so first in France. So in the next months we are going to launch alsace.tv.com, aquitaine.tv.com, Auvergne, etc. And, uh, one subdomain for every region of France. So very easily, uh, internet users will have the possibility to see the project in a specific region and brands, institutions, and medias who want to participate, to support, and to associate their image will have the possibility to do that on dedicated subdomains. Well, so I think it's here now. Thanks for your attention. And thank if you have any questions. Uh, thank you very much, Arnaud, and congratulations.